Okay, per our ACORN diagram, we're going to connect our VFDCM to a common point on ACORN. Here are our outputs. So there's a common, we'll hook it up there. And then you'll see here it says uh, VFD common, that's one we'll use. And then we're going to use VFD spindle forward and VFD spindle reverse. So VFD spindle forward is OC4 and VFD spindle reverse is OC5 and our analog ground and analog output are right here. So let's go ahead and set that up. So we know that our analog input is currently wired black. So we're going to go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and strip this back so we have a little bit more lead. And everything is powered off right now. You make these connections with everything powered down. Again, this is a bench test, but you see this is a shielded cable and it's got a, a drain wire. Now for VFD connections, in my uh, experience, to use an 18 gauge wire, especially for the analog signal inputs, uh, shielded, and then again, connect the drain wire back to the one ground common point. That's best practice. For bench testing, I'm not gonna do that. Okay, so. We have black on AI, so we're going to take black. Probably should have chose a different color, but it is what it is. So on Acorn, voltage out. We'll connect that there. Okay. And then we said per the diagram, we're going to use spindle forward, which is OC4. And we've got red as our forward. So OC4 is this one right here. It's screened right on the board. And then we've got green for reverse. So red, red is OC4 spindle forward. Green reverse is OC5. So we're going to take green on OC5. Okay, and then we've got to take our common and it says we take it to, uh, you know, any one of these that say common is fine. So I'm just going to, this is VFD common right here. Uh, it's between OC6 and OC7. We'll put it in there to follow the schematic. Right here, here's OC6 and here's OC7. So we'll use this common terminal. Now you'll notice we don't have a common terminal from our analog signal here. I'm unsure if this common is tied to these commons, so I'm going to get my meter and we're going to do a continuity test. Otherwise, we'll put a jumper from common to common because uh, um, this white is going to common, so, and we need a common for the analog signal input. Okay, I have our meter. I'm going to go continuity. Again, remember, everything's powered down. I'm going to check my meter. Okay, we're good there. But here's our analog. It says, it says V out. So this is our black wire going to our analog input here on the VFD. And then there's common here. And we have the common CM, white, it's going to common. And we've got red, DI1, that's going to OC4 per the schematic. And then we have green, that's going to OC5 per the schematic. And what we were checking is to make sure that this common and analog output common were the same, and they are. But you know what I'm going to do is I want to I want to ensure that they are the same. So what I'm going to do is for the time being I'm going to go ahead and install a jumper from there over to this common wire as well. And we need commons for the digital inputs here, and we need a common for this analog output. So that's all set. So theoretically now we should be able to run uh, Acorn and have Acorn control the spindle. Here is a screenshot of the way the wizard is configured right now.
Okay, you'll notice that output four is spindle forward. And that's what we have here. Red wire is D1, that's spindle forward on the VFD, and we're using output four here. And then you will notice that output five on the wizard is set for spindle reverse. Well, we have green, here's output five, there's five, and we have five here. So that is also programmed correctly. So now what I'm going to do really quickly is I'm going to go into spindle setup. And I'm going to show you, here's a screenshot of the wizard page on spindle setup. And you'll notice that the max spindle speed in high range is 1500. What we want to do is we're going to put that to 3300 for now. Because we know our max spindle speed is 3300. And then uh, we do not have a spindle encoder, so we're going to set that to no. No spindle encoder. Our minimum spindle speed range is zero, um, and the rest of this doesn't apply. So here's our new, new setup for the spindle. Now we're going to go ahead and write changes to CNC control, yes. Settings are saved, we click OK. We're going to exit the wizard. I'm going to power up the VFD. This video is about the GS1 from Automation Direct, okay? There are VFDs that supply 24 volts. And if you take the 24 volts to these open collector outputs, you can short the Acorn board. I recommend using a board like this one. It's, and you want an NPN version of it. I've done a video, previous video on one of these. I've shown how it's wired up. But 24 volts goes to common, so it goes to the coils of these relays. And then these inputs go to the Acorn outputs. So Acorn is driving these dry contact relays, and then you connect the proper, normally open uh, contacts of those relays to your VFD input terminals. I'm wiring the automation direct directly to Acorn. It uses a common, a common system. It's not supplying 24 volts. So in all cases, you should use a dry contact relay board. Okay, I'm powering up the PC now. We've got our Acorn board wired up. We've got our VFD powered up. I'm gonna go ahead and start up CNC 12 lathe. And I'm gonna jog my axis here. Don't have my little tape on the motor so you guys can see, but they are working. Okay, those are all working good. All right. So now I'm going to go up to spindle control. There is a screenshot. And what we're going to do is we're going to take it out in the upper right corner. It says auto spindle manual. When that LED is lit on that button on auto, that means the control can control the spindle speed. We're going to do this manually. So we're going to click on it. And here you see we're out of automatic. And down here, lower right, we're going to go and click the green, green button. And here you see that the motor's running, and it's running at its lowest speed. Raise it, we're gonna click the plus sign. There's a plus and a minus sign. It's, it defaults to, to low. Let's hit the 100%, which is halfway. And then we're gonna go ahead and ramp it up a little bit. Okay, so what I did, is I hit the plus button. So that's, that's full speed. If you look at our VFD here, it's at 60 hertz, that's full speed. Now let me put it 100%. 100% is half, so you see 30, 30 uh, hertz here. So we're at half. Let's go ahead and try and measure the analog input. We should have about five volts if we're at half. We have zero to 10 volt analog, that's our range, zero to 10 volts on the analog signal output. At half RPM, we should be at 30 volts, which we are, and we should be about five volts DC. We're gonna go common to analog input. And you guys see there. And you guys see there, we're at five volts. 
Now we'll go full speed again, all the way up. We're at 60 hertz, and you see we're at 10 volts input. All right, so we've gone through another step here. So we want to monitor the VFD output. So if there's a failure, it tells ACORN and CNC12 that, hey, I failed, stop. Because what you don't want is your, if your spindle stops running, you don't want to keep running the, you don't want the control to keep on running your program. You have no spindle movement, you'll end up with an ugly crash, a tool crash. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and shut down by hitting the red button. And so we're off. So now uh, the next step, and I'm not sure that this is going to be on our card. Maybe it is. It is. It's everything we need has been right on this card. So the multifunction output terminal. Okay, we're going to want to program these uh, outputs R1 and R10. So what we got to do is we're going to have to change um, the multifunction output terminal. We're going to change it to drive fault. So if something happens, we get, a, we get an output. Okay, we want to change 311 to number one, AC drive fault. So let's go into program. We want terminal, we want program number 311. So we go three, enter, and we go to 11. There it is. Enter, and the default is zero, drive running. We want AC drive fault. We're going to go up one, and we're going to go enter. So now these terminals are programmed for a fault. So again, let me get another, another jumper, and we'll wire it from the drive to an input. And we're probably going to use, we're not going to use drive OK, because drive OK is being used. Drive OK, if you remember, is input 5, and we're using input 5 for uh, stepper closed loop stepper drives. So we're going to use, we can, we're not going to use a probe on the lathe, so we can use input six or input seven. So let me get a jumper and we'll wire those up. Okay, I've got a jumper here, so we can wire it up, but I am not going to do this with everything powered up. I'm going to shut it all down, because last thing I do is want to be hooking something up here to the drive, and then these wires are floating around. They hit something on Acorn. That's a no-no. Power it all down before you connect, so I'm going to power it all down. I'm going to shut down CNC 12 first. I'm doing that on the display. I'm powering down the, the CNC PC. And I'm powering down that. Now I'm going to power down our variable frequency drive. Okay, we're powered down completely, so I'm going to go ahead and put our wires in the drive here. This is just a dry contact closure in our drive. So we're on R1 and R10. Okay, so now, we, because our inputs to ACORN, we have 24 volts coming out, going through the contact, the other end has to go to common. So we're going to take this to common. And I'm just going to find an unused common. There is one here. I'm going to put it in here. Right next to OC8. And I think we're going to go ahead and use... We'll go ahead and use input 6 as our spindle fault input. Okay, so there's input six, here's common. So if the drive faults, if the drive faults, the contacts will close. That's what I'm assuming, they will close. In fact, let's look at our card, see if it says anything. Yeah, if you look at the card here, it shows, it shows it normally open, but it may close when the drive powers up. No matter, we'll be able to see here shortly. But let's assume it's normally open. So. We have 24 volt input coming in, and until this closes, there won't be a signal sent. That, that input cannot be grounded. Now, if this is normally close, if it's normally open, we power it up, it closes, then what we'll do is we'll invert, we'll change it from normally closed input to a normally open input. We have that flexibility in ACORN. All right, so I'm gonna power everything back up. Okay, our computer's booting. Again, we're gonna have to go into the wizard and assign input 6 to spindle OK. 
All right, the computer's up. I'm going to go into the wizard and give you a screenshot of the wizard here so you see where we're at. Okay, input six is set to unused. We're going to change input six to spindle OK. And you will notice on input six, this is normally closed. If we have a normally open contact, as the drawing says, let's change this to normally open. We're going to commit that. We're right the settings to CNC control configuration. We say yes. Settings are saved. Now we're going to go into CNC 12 lathe, fire it up, and I'll set machine home and we'll look to see if we have a fault. All right, I'm going to open up the diagnostic screen. That's done by pressing Alt I. I want you to see input six. Input six is set to spindle OK. Up here where the box is around it, it is green. And uh, so it's, it's set to spindle OK. It's inverted and it's green. If you look in the dialog box, there are no errors. I'm going to go ahead and go to virtual control panel and the spindle control. That's the upper left corner. I'm going to take it out of automatic. I'm going to set it to 100% and I'm going to go ahead and start the spindle. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and try and create a fault. I'm going to grab the spindle with my gloved hand. This is only half horse motor so I can stop it and stall it. Watch the VFD. Okay, we've got an overload condition and on the display we have a spindle fault. Okay, so now we know that we've got things wired correctly. Um, it was a normally open contact and it closes when there's a fault. So we know this is good. Now you notice, well, how do we reset the fault on the VFD? Well, there's only one way to reset it. Well, there's two ways to reset it. One is power down the VFD. The other one is to reset the VFD remotely with an output from Acorn. That's a spindle, that's a reset. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to reprogram, let's program D13 here for spindle reset. So we're going to look at the, the card. If you look at the card closely, Three zero two. Multi multifunction input DI three. We're going to set the input to external reset. So we want three oh two. We're going to set it to number two. So let's go to the drive. Program enter. 3, enter, 1, 2, enter. Uh, currently it's set to external fault normally open. Now we're going to set it to external reset number 2. So we go 1, 2, set it to 2. All right. So now we've also got a program ACORN. So we're going to use OC6, VFD reset. So we're going to get a line from OC6 to digital input 3. So let me get a wire and we'll do that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and power everything down again. Shut down, CNC 12, exit, escape. And we're going to power down the PC. And we're going to power down the control. Disconnect power to the VFD. Okay, we're going to wire digital input number three. So we got digital input number three, and we're taking it to VFD reset, which is OC6. OC6 is right here. OC6 is right here. Okay, 
I'm going to power everything back up. Okay, our VFD is powering up. Acorn is powering up. VFD's up, Acorn's up. Waiting on the computer. I'm going to quickly go into the wizard, but I'm assuming it's probably okay. And we're going to verify that output six is drive reset output. And it is. So it's already set. We've already committed that, already written it. So let's go ahead and close that. Let's go ahead and start up CNC 12 lathe. I'm going to go into spindle control, upper left corner virtual control panel. I'm going to take it out of automatic. And I'm going to put it to 100%. I'm going to start the spindle by pressing the green button in spindle control. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and try and cause a fault on the VFD. I'm going to grab it. Okay, we got a fault. We have a fault on our dialog box. And you see the overload basically here. Now, again, previously we had to power down the VFD. So we don't want to get in there, and, you know, once our control's all built, having to get in there and power down the VFD to reset it. So what we're going to do now is simply, we can hit the virtual control panel reset, or we can hit our e-stop reset. Let's go ahead, and I'm going to go ahead and hit the e-stop reset. So you cycle the e-stop to reset. Now watch, our, you see our VFD? When we hit that reset, it cleared. Now we can hit the green start button, and away we go again. Let's repeat that one more time. I'm going to grab that motor, cause a fault. We've got a fault. We've got a fault on our display. All I'm going to do now is just cycle the stop button to clear it. Watch the VFD when I hit it. You see it cleared, so it's ready to go. We've configured Acorn, we've configured the VFD for this motor. It, the motor is ready to go on the lathe. Uh, we've got control from Acorn. Um, I, what I'll do is I'll spin you down here and then we'll use an MDI command and we'll spin the motor up, let you see it, and uh, wrap it up. Okay, we're cleared. I'm going to go ahead and cycle the e-stop. I'm just going to press the uh, virtual control panel button once, make sure everything's cleared. And then we'll go up here again. We're in manual mode. If we push that button, it's an automatic. I'll show you again in manual what I was doing earlier, 100%. We press that. I don't know how long our little flag here is going to last, but it'll. It's the motor spinning. We'll shut it down. Okay, now what I want to do is I'm going to put it back in automatic command. I'm going to go to manual data input. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to use my keyboard here. I'm going to do an M. 3S 1500. And I'm going to do a cycle start. And there we go. Now we'll do an S 3300. S 3300 should go full speed. Whoops, not 1000. We'll do a cycle start. And then we'll do an S 1000. And I'm going to hit Alt-S on the keyboard, same as cycle start. And you can see it running about 1,000 RPM. You know, we're going to put a tachometer on the lathe when we get the motor put in the lathe, but this is just for bench testing purposes. And let's do a S1650, which should be half speed. And looking at the... Uh, Looking at the VFD here, we're at 30 hertz, so we're good. And then we'll do an M5 to shut her down. Now let's go ahead and run it in reverse. We'll do an M4S1650, Alt-S, cycle start. And it's, it's going in reverse at 30 hertz. S3300. There's full speed. And then we'll do an M5 to shut her down, Alt-S. And there we go.
That's a wrap on bench testing a VFD and a motor. And you see what I did. I started with just basically connecting the motor to the VFD, setting up the motor voltage, the base RPM, the current, and then just testing it from the operator panel, making sure the VFD and the uh, motor work together. So we, we did that. And then the next step is we uh, started programming the VFD. Um, we used, uh, we set the acceleration, deceleration speeds down. Um, we started using, we programmed the digital inputs to make sure that forward and the digital input one was forward, digital input two was reverse. We did that. And then we uh, set up the VFD, programmed it for an analog input instead of the potentiometer on the front. And once we did that, we used a battery to uh, analog input, which is AI in common. We put one in between and we put one and a half volts to it and the motor spun up uh, as, as we would expect it. And then we put a nine volt battery and it spun up to nearly 60 Hertz. And then once we were satisfied with that, we connected it to Acorn. We set up Acorn. We made sure that uh, the analog outputs were programmed correctly for spindle forward, spindle reverse. Uh, we set the upper RPM limit in ACORN for 3300 RPM. And then we tested that. We got the, by manually using the, uh, the spindle control here, we were able to spin the motor uh, manually, forward, reverse, run the speed up, run it down, and so forth. And then we stalled it, and then we saw a fault. And then we discussed how do you reset the fault in the VFD without powering down the VFD? And that's when we added the spindle reset output from ACORN to the VFD. So uh, that about covers everything on bench testing. Um, uh, the next, uh, I think the next video will be uh, mounting up the motors. I'm waiting on some pulley stock so I can get the, uh, the pulleys on the motors and then mounted back up on the lathe. I will be running the lathe at one to one with these motors rather than the, uh, the previous uh, reduction. Um, these motors have more than enough torque to drive this lathe at one to one. If we would have used that reduction, we would have been about two and a half times the, what is it, 232 ounce inch? I think that's what they are. So we didn't need to, you know, up that by two and a half times. So by running it one to one, we keep the torque coming out of the motor at its at its uh, rating, and uh, we'll have to watch the uh, rapids. We don't need super fast rapids on such a small machine. Uh, so that's next. Uh, one last thing that I want to talk about again. I want to reiterate when you're using the outputs three, four, five, six, seven, and eight on Acorn you really need to use one of these relay boards so that you're going through dry contacts. All VFDs are not created equal. They're not all wired the same. Again, this video was specifically for the Automation Direct GS1, okay? If you're gonna use a different VFD, the best thing, the safest thing is let Acorn turn on and off a dry contact to turn on those inputs on your VFD. That's the safe bet. For technical support, please go to the Centroid CNC user forums, ask questions there if you need a little bit of help with your VFD. We'll try and make suggestions. Ultimately, it's up to you to program and wire your equipment properly. So with that, until the next video, so long, have fun. I hope you found this useful.